This is Easton. He was walking in the forest. Unfortunately, he got lost. It was cold since it was winter. After wandering around for a while, Easton saw three roads. All of them seemed dangerous. If the guy took the road leading to the left, he'd have to go through the area where a pack of hungry wolves lived. If he went straight ahead, he'd go through a place inhabited by huge brown bears. The right road would lead him to a lake covered with thin ice. Which way should Easton choose? He should pick the road leading straight ahead. The brown bears living there won't be dangerous. It's winter, and these animals sleep during this season. Serena went to the spookiest house in the neighborhood on her own. That definitely was a mistake. Once she got inside, the door got locked behind her. Now she had three ways out. Behind the first door, there was a zombie. Behind the second door, there was a vampire. Behind the third door, there was an angry ghost. Ooh. Which way is the safest? Serena should choose the third door. Ghosts may be spooky, but they can't cause any real harm. Serena told her friends about her adventures and, of course, they didn't believe her. So the next night, one of them, Rylan, decided to go to the house too. Once he walked in, the door behind him got locked. And again, there were three ways out. But this time, behind the first door, there was a huge magnifying glass. It used the light from the sun to burn anyone and anything that was inside. Behind the second door, there was a huge dragon that disliked strangers. And behind the third door, there was a hungry lion. Which way should Rylan choose to survive? Luckily for him, it's night. There's no sun, so the magnifying glass won't cause any harm. The first door is the safest choice. Archer was going to throw a birthday party. He invited all his friends. But that was also the day when he found out that one of them was an alien. Can you tell who? It's Alex. Look, both of his shoes are left one. Eh, that's weird. In a parallel universe, it's only allowed to have fun and eat sweets. Studying is against the law. Mrs. Noslow came home after a party in a club and asked her daughters about their day. Eve said she had been playing computer games all day long. Anna said she'd invited her friends over. They made a huge pizza and ate it together. Hannah said she hadn't even left her bed. She was watching YouTube videos. In reality, one of the girls was secretly studying. Ooh. Anna, look at her hands. There are some ink stains. If she had been watching YouTube, she wouldn't have used a pen. Karina was going to become a historian. After classes, she liked to go to the History Museum to read her books and learn new things. One day, while the girl was studying there, she went to the bathroom, leaving her stuff behind. When she returned, she discovered that her wallet was missing. Noelle said she never paid attention to Karina or her stuff. Tucker said that at that time, he was on the phone with his friend. Lyra said she hadn't stolen anything. Who lied? Tucker. It's prohibited to talk on the phone in the museum. Mrs. Moore had a rule. If her daughters wanted to eat ice cream in the evening, they had to do some housework during the day. On a rainy Tuesday, she came back from work and asked her daughters what they'd done. Charlotte said she'd vacuum cleaned the second floor. Indiana said she'd done the laundry. Polaris said she'd watered the plants in the garden. Who didn't eat ice cream that day? Polaris. She said she'd watered the flowers. But why would she do it if it was raining outside? Detective Callum is on a mission to find a vampire and an elf. 
he knows that the vampire lives in the red house on the left side of the neighborhood. Look closely at this family and find the vampire. It's this guy. He's walking past the mirror, but there's no reflection. Now back to the elf. He lives in the greenhouse on the right side of the neighborhood. Detective Callum has started to watch this building too. Luckily, he has only spotted two people. But who is the elf? It must be this guy. Look, his ears are pointed. Mr. and Mrs. Mitchell called the police. They said that their son, a private school student, hadn't come back from school. The problem was that he suffered from amnesia. The police started to search the city. They found three teenagers with amnesia who didn't know their names or the names of their parents. And still, they managed to figure out who Mr. and Mrs. Mitchell's son was. Can you understand it? It's the guy in the middle. Mr. and Mrs. Mitchell's son went to school in the morning and didn't return, so he must still be wearing his school uniform. Phoebus crossed the border of two countries every day, riding his bike and wearing a huge backpack. The custom officers checked his bag every day, but couldn't find anything prohibited. And still, they were sure that Phoebus was up to no good. They were actually right, but they couldn't understand what was wrong. Can you figure it out? Look, every time, Phoebus rides a different bike. He smuggles bikes right in front of their noses. Mrs. Adams came back home. She had three children who were grounded and not allowed to watch TV. When she was about to get into the house, she heard that the TV was on. But when she entered, it had already been turned off. Serenity was in the garden. She said she had been redoing her flower bed for the last couple of hours. Cressida was upstairs in her room doing her homework. Everett was in the garage playing the guitar. Who lied? Serenity. No one works in the garden wearing a dress. Also, she's completely clean and doesn't have any garden tools with her. Oliver is terrible at packing. Whenever he goes somewhere, he always takes the stuff he'll never need. Today, he's packing to go camping in the forest. Take a look inside his bag and decide what he won't need on the trip. Look, there's an electric kettle. There's no electricity in the forest, so he can definitely leave it at home. Now, look at what Oliver has packed for a weekend at his parents' house. What things won't he need? There are two huge towels. I'm pretty sure his parents have spare towels. He can leave them at home. Oliver is going on vacation to a deserted island. He will spend a couple of days there, trying to survive on his own. What things won't he need on the island? Oh boy, don't take this laptop with you. It'll run out of power really fast. Susie was finally going on vacation, and she was planning to spend it in Mexico. She lived alone, so she asked her friend to look after her plants and her cat. The friend agreed and took them to her house. When Susie returned, she realized that someone had been in her house while she had been away. How did Susie understand it? Susie lives alone, but look, several packages were delivered while she was away. And somehow, they are inside, not outside the house. Elijah got into a road accident. He crashed into a tree. He smashed his car and got several bruises himself. He didn't break any rules, and still, when the police arrived, 
they noticed one small detail and took his driver's license away. Why? Elijah is wearing glasses. He's got a couple of cuts on his face, but his glasses aren't broken, even a bit. The police suspected that even though the guy had poor eyesight, he wasn't wearing his glasses while driving. He must have put them on only after the accident. Sebastian was a famous archaeologist who dedicated his life to finding the treasures of ancient civilizations. One day, he found a chest full of golden coins in a cave. They dated back to 2000 BCE. For some reason, Sebastian was terribly disappointed with this discovery. Why? The coins were fake. Back in 2000 BCE, people didn't know they were living in the era before the current one, so they couldn't possibly have engraved this date on their coins. Nice catch.